So I've got, just got the, um, the AFM acquiring an image, and this is basically the first image that I've been able to get out of the AFM. Um, I don't have any calibration standards or anything like that. So what I did is I bought some cheap uh, scrap wafers off eBay. And I figured they might be useful for a bunch of um, kind of calibration applications, um, including looking at them through like an electron microscope uh, that I have with some friends out in Japan um, and for looking at uh, stuff through an STM. So they kind of, the idea was that, uh, well, they'll have probably um, a range of feature sizes and uh, hundreds of nanometers to micron size features on them, which is, is kind of what I want uh, to have so that for the STM in particular, um, I have something bigger than atoms <laughs> to look at. Um, anyway, so I just got my first uh, images out of the AFM, so I was very happy because uh, I wasn't sure that I'd be able to do that. Um, and this is an FPGA. Um, this, uh, I can't remember the name of the company, but I'll link in the images um, and the name of a part before. Um, but it's like a um, late 90s uh, FPGA. It's not one of the big guys. It's not um, uh, Xilinx uh, or, or Altera. But, uh, yeah. And um, I'm pretty confident <laughs> that these are real features on the FPGA. Um, there's obviously still if issues. So I've still got quite a few things to figure out. Um, it's only generally imaging on this side. And then it drifts off. And that I think that may be that I haven't got the tip uh, aligned properly. Uh, to the surface or the samples at an angle, I'm not sure, um, but it seems to be seems to be working. So just on the software side, I'm kind of going to go back uh, and just see if I can rerun um, uh, the experiment. So, oops, if I withdraw the tip. So it's nanoscope, and let's use the default printers. So let's see if I can get this working again on video, so I have a kind of a log. Um, and just click OK. So I add view, and I'm adding scan display, uh, scan perimeter list is another important one and point and shoot those are the three i'm going to add so you've just set up the um, cantilever uh, as i'll show in another video then you want to cantilever tune and you just hit auto tune and you get all sorts of pretty graphs which i don't understand And you hope it doesn't give you an error. Okay, it didn't give an error, so that means it's fine. <laughs> um, then you engage the tip. So it's microscope, engage. So it's now it should it would be far away from the surface. So this process would take a lot longer usually if you've just set up the cantilever, as it's kind of taking longer to approach the uh, uh, to move the surf the uh, the surface close to the cantilever. Um, in this case, I kind of withdraw withdrew the tip um, after having after it being engaged, so it's a lot quicker. Okay, so it's starting to take pictures. Um, now, for this scan, I think I was using 10, 10 microns. It's big features. It's a 10 micron size scan. I was before, it took a bit of fun searching around things. I think I was offset by about 10 microns in each direction. Uh, and I bumped up the scan rate to about 10 hertz. Uh, what else? It takes, took me a lot of fiddling. The, the main thing was that the data type 
looked, you know, Amplitude was doing a lot better than um, Height. I don't know what the difference between Amplitude and Height is. <laughs> um, I'd like to know. <laughs> so if you know, please tell me. Uh, yeah, that's not working at all, is it? And so it always gives you this real-time display of what of the scan. Um, push up the scan resolution. It took me lots and lots of fiddling. Maybe maybe that was bigger. Okay, there we go. So I've pushed out the scan size to 100 microns. Um, so you're imaging even more of the area now. So this is the scan, the, the real-time scan display. What do, what do they call it? Real-time status. And this is point and shoot. So this is for actually taking your final images. I, I generally just right-click and do copy to clipboard. That's what I've been doing so far. Um, and that seems to work fine. So yeah, that, that's the basic process. So um, you can set the, select the defaults and then um, cantilever tune and then just hit auto tune to tune the cantilever. Um, then right click on this untitled thing and add real time status. The uh, point and shoot and scan parameter list is the important one because that gives you all of the parameters that you can change. So you can change like the scan size. And obviously you've got a really large range that you can go over. Um, so in this case, 100 microns. Um, it, it defaults to quite a slow scan speed as well, uh, like uh, one hertz. And then for this, I, I found 10 hertz was fine. I'm gonna experiment that, but I would have thought faster is often better because um, you don't have the vibration issues. Um, and then you can change the data type from height. And in, like in this one, like, yeah, I'll, I'll put some of the height images on the blog that I'll link in. Uh, but uh, yeah, height, look at this, it's terrible. I can kind of pick out the features, but not, not very well at all. Uh, so amplitude is working a lot better. Don't know why that is. Who knows? Uh, maybe if I change something, you know, that maybe there's something else I can change. But you know, like, uh, yeah. So I, I, I'm not an expert. This is the first image I've taken, but this this video is partly a uh, a log, so I know what I did. Um, and when I come back to it, I can watch this and think, oh, okay, that's what I did to get some kind of image out of it. But I'm kind of comfortable I verified the operation of the AFM that it's a functional system um, and uh, yeah I need to think about where where to go from here so that's that for this part of the video on uh, on the AFM <laughs>